So this is the next function I want to teach you called array for each. Array for each means you uh, now have a for loop within your expression engine. Remember, you can do aggregate expression where you can evaluate one feature against all the features, but you can do it only once. What if I want to do it 10 times, again, like 10 different layers? Well, you can now write, if you want to write a for loop, you want to do multiple things within a single expression. This is a function that allows you to do this. The way it works is you say, give an array, give a list of things and an expression, which will run for each item in the list. So a simple example is if you have an array one, two, three, and you say array for each one, two, three, at element plus one, at element will refer to each item from the list. And you run this, you'll get output as two, three, four. So you just did three computations. Instead of just saying one plus one, two plus one, three plus one, you just say array one, two, three, and array for each element plus one. And this allows you to do kind of multiple computations per single expressions. Where would we use this? Well, I published this blog post on finding the neighbors of each state. And folks started using this and say, okay, this is great. We know for each state or each farm, what are the neighbors? But I also want to know what is the length of shared boundary between those. So now you can say, I take the state Kansas, I can find the neighbors using the aggregate expression, but now with Colorado and Kansas, what's the length of the border? And I want that border for each of those. So I want for each state, first I want to find the neighbors, and then I want to intersect Kansas and Colorado, find this line, get the length of this. Then I want Kansas and Oklahoma, find the length of this. And I want to do this for every neighbor for every state and do this for all the states. So you know, again, you are now running a for loop within your expression. So how do we do this? Well, I'll do the demo of this. Again, we have a blog post with step-by-step -step instructions. We get a list of neighbors. So we have neighbors for each neighbor. So this is where the array for each comes in. For each neighbor, we say for this polygon to the neighbor polygon, intersect it. We intersect, we get a line. So when you intersect two polygons, you get a line, Complete the length of each thing, and you'll get in meters, convert to miles, and we now have length of each polygon for each of the, the neighbors. Let's see this in action. So we first step, we'll just compute the neighbors. We just did this. So we'll do a field calculator. And we'll do the neighbors. Since I'm this is not my final output, I can use QGIS's temporary layer. I can just do a list of strings for now. If you're saving this as a field geo package, you need to create a list of strings using concatenate, etc. Okay. Right. We just write it again. So we'll just find the neighbors, the layer B at layer, the aggregate would be just the array ag is stusps. This is the kind of the state ID that we want to use as a neighbors thing, and filter will be touches from the front. So this one has the list of neighbors for each state. We'll convert this to lines. So when we when you intersect two polygons, we, we get a polygon, but we want the line, the length of the border. So we'll just convert this polygon layer to lines. We'll use the polygon to line algorithm. This will just give us a line layer. So this is line layer, same attributes, but now we have line for each state. And what we want to do now is for each feature, we want to iterate through each neighbor and say, what is intersect Mississippi with Louisiana? Compute the border length. Intersect Mississippi with Alabama? Compute the border length. And we want a list of shared border length between those as a new attribute. And we'll do this in a single step. So let's do this. And again, I'll show you the technique I used to build this expression. If you see the final exp expression, it'll be scary and almost unintelligible. But see how you can build this one step at a time and you know, kind of uh, all your final problem using this. And this will be the stuff we teach us. So first we have our fields here. So we have the neighbors, which is our list here. Okay. And since we have a list, we can use array for each. So this is our function, give a list, and we can do something with this in the expression. So we can refer to each of them as an element. So right now we're just saying, take each item from this neighbors, just use the element as it is. 
Okay, nothing special about this. Now, the each element is this short code. So we have Mississippi, Florida, whatever. And what we want to do is we want to get the features, actual geometry of that feature. So we can use this function. We can say feature. So get feature says get a feature from a layer for that matches the attribute. So we'll say use this get feature. Look at the current layer. From the current layer, where the attribute of stusps is equal to this element, find that feature. So now it says, I have a short code. Go and find what feature from the current layer matches that. So you can see now we have a list of features for each of those. Once we have a feature, we say, I want the geometry of the feature. So I will say, get the geometry of that feature. We have the geometry of each of the neighbors, and we have a list of geometries. Once we have the geometries, we can say, compute the intersection of each geometry with the current geometry. So you can see we have intersected the current geometry with each of the neighbor's geometry, and we have the line string. Once we have the line string, we can say, this is the geometry, compute the length of those. We have a list of lengths in the unit of CRS. So this is the meters. You want to convert it to miles. So this is the conversion factor. We'll just say, multiply this into this, and we have this length in miles for each of the neighbors. And we can just turn it into a rounded number. So we'll just say round this into a number. So we now have a list of border lengths in miles for each of the neighbors. Let's run this. 0.85 seconds. And we have now computed the border lengths of each of the state's neighbors against each of those. And you can see now for each state, these are the four neighbors, and this is the shared border length between each of those. So again, you can see how you can now going level deeper and deeper. And once you get comfortable with the expression engine and these expressions, a lot of these problems will you will be able to solve with very less time and less code. And again, you can probably write a few hundred lines of Python code, but having expression means you can now put this inside of a model. And now you can just run that model and you know you can run it as a batch process or as part of a larger workflow.